Hi, and welcome back. In our previous video, we looked at what cross-functionality actually means. This time, we're going to take this a bit deeper. We're going to look at the journey that a group of developers takes over time. Initially, many developers start out with code focus. We refer to this as code focus because of the vast amount of work that we have done in the field of software especially with organizations in the financial services industry, be it banks and insurances. Those developers, where we say they have code focus, have been working on one area of the code for maybe the past 15 years. Not only have they not participated or did any work in other sections, but also no one else has worked in their area of the application. This, of course, is very risky both for the individual and for the organization. The risks for the individual are the following. Imagine the organization starts to move to a different technology stack. Suddenly, the expertise of that individual is no longer needed. The risks for the organization are also relevant. For example, in many of those organizations where they not only have legacy code, but a huge monolithic architecture, many new items that they want to deliver are related to certain pieces of the code. So many teams that are working on delivering new value, new features to customers, have to interact with that one specific individual. And no one else can do this, so these individuals become bottlenecks. One of the best ways to move from I-shaped, which means code-focused people, to T-shaped people, is to have them pair on assignments with someone else. In the case of software, we refer to this as pair programming. This is nothing new. In many other professions, pairing or pair programming is very common in order to transfer knowledge from one person to another. I myself have a background in medicine, and when I was receiving my training as a surgeon, I always did pairing, because in very few cases you have only two, in most cases three or four surgeons operating together on the patient. This has multiple benefits, among which transfer of knowledge from the more experienced, from the more senior surgeons to the younger ones, but also immediately you have a higher quality of care because multiple pairs of eyes are looking at the field of operation and they make sure that nothing gets lost within the body of the patient. Pilots use the same principles as well. You barely see a plane being flown only by one pilot. So you have always a senior, which is the captain, and then a co-pilot. And this results, again, in higher levels of safety, but also transfer of knowledge from the more senior person to the more junior person. Pairing is a great first step to move people from code focus to what we refer as product focus. Because once they start working outside of their traditional domain, many of the developers, for the very first time, start to see the whole product. This should not be the end of our journey. The next step is to increase the level of understanding of our developers about our customers. So moving from product focus to customer focus. One of the best ways to do this is to have all developers not only participate in our sprint reviews, but early on get into frequent and regular customer interactions. At MAN, we had the luxury of sending every single developer to spend a day with truck drivers and get a much better understanding of where they are, what kind of needs they have. Steve Blank, a professor at Stanford University and one of the thought leaders in the space of startups, always says, get out of the building. This not only refers to the product owner, but also to the developers. So once you engage people in those sprint reviews, once you engage them in regular customer interactions, they get a much better understanding of the customer. They actually build up customer focus. And it's not only that they are motivated more, now they also contribute better ideas to how to improve our product. This is still not the end of our journey. Our last and final step is to move from customer focus to business focus. What does that mean? This means that everyone on our team has that level of understanding to be able to make business decisions. If we go back to our skills matrix, where we looked at different skill set in terms of development, this would be 
are developers actually building up the skill set, the domain expertise of a product owner. In those situations, you can actually get rid of having only one product owner. And one gaming company in Lithuania actually did this. They wrote an article, We Killed Product Owners. Of course, I was interested to read it. So when I read through the article, I realized that yes, they didn't have formal product owners any longer, but they still had the concept of product ownership. But that product ownership was not only one person being a product owner, it was actually many people acting as product owners. It was many people coming up with ideas for the product backlog, providing perspectives on how to prioritize it, and as they had built the capability to come to great group decisions, they were also fast enough in prioritization and decision making. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of organizations that put in their job descriptions, we want people that are customer centric. We want people that think in an entrepreneurial way, which would be exactly the type of people that we have laid out through this journey. Too few organizations help their people get there. My take has always been, none of us is born as an I-shaped person. None of us is born as being code focused. We are all very curious and we want to take as broad of a perspective as possible. It is the organizations where we work in that make us from being fairly broad and curious to being very narrow and code focused. So it is also the organization that can create the environment that helps us move again and become broader, move from code to product to customer and ultimately business focus. And once an organization has more and more people taking that business perspective, collaborating in order to deliver maximum amount of value for the customers, those organizations will succeed. I hope this video gave you a great understanding of the journey that a group of developers can take and what are the individual steps you can do from pairing to sprint reviews and sharing more and more of the business context with them. In our next videos, we will deep dive into other tools and techniques that can help you systematically develop your team. See you in those videos.